On answer keys, I'll just quickly address that. The graph that gets put up where there was six studies that people often cite and say this wasn't representative of the total literature, that's actually from a seminar where Ansel Keys discussed the relationship between fat and heart disease three or four years before the seven country study had even started. Then the other graph where there's 22 data points, which there was an academic debate at the time around is it fat, is it sugar? And the academics who thought it was sugar sort of put this graph together with 22 countries showing the relationship between saturated fat and heart disease. Not saturated fat, I should say. It was total fat at that time. And what people overlook is that even in that graph, when you look at 22 countries, the relationship still exists. There are a couple of outliers like France, but generally when you look at it as total fat intake went up in the diet, so did incidence of coronary heart disease. And so even if you look at that graph and there's an outlier, I would question why someone would believe the outlier to be true against all of these other data points that we have. And on the stories and the someone being 100 and smoking and drinking alcohol, these sorts of stories exist all over the place. And I think people need to understand that there is a bell curve. So what we see in scientific research is an average or a typical kind of outcome. None of us are average. We're going to fall somewhere on a bell curve. There's no such thing. And some of these points will be outliers. So when you hear a story, is that the typical, is that the normal response that someone would get to the intervention that story entailed? Or are they an outlier? Outliers are possible. They are not probable. So my job in communicating to people is looking at body of evidence and explaining to them what are the typical results that you would get with some type of dietary intervention.